TikTok. <laughs> what is going down, TikTok? Oh my goodness, it's so good to see you. How are we doing today? Oh, I love this table. It's so nice. It is so nice. It's just right here. It's just right here. Like, I love this. Like, I love this. Look, I could even... You wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know. <laughs> what is up, you guys? So good to see you. We are making magic happen. What day is it? Is it Thursday? It is Thursday. I feel like I'm missing... Oh, that's what it... Oh, where'd it go? Oh, hold up. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh my goodness gracious, I figured it out. <laughs> oh, look at that. No, I don't want that. Do I want that? I guess I want that. We could do that. What's going down, y'all? <laughs> Chuckles. Yeah, hang on. I, I'm like, just, just, that fan needs to be turned up just a little bit. It's so hot here. <laughs> All right. Making magic. Thank you for being patient through my, my setup process. <laughs> goodness gracious, guys. How is everybody today? We're just getting started, making magic happen. It is, it is, it's so interesting. I don't know who, who else is feeling it. Like I, I, I hear, okay, let's say this. <laughs> I sometimes forget, sup Katie? I sometimes forget that people go through phases too, right? So for instance, you could be in like a really great mood and be working with somebody or be associated with somebody and they are them. And then you're like, oh no, <laughs> you're the same. And they're starting to shift and nothing, nothing like drastic happened. It's just, they are going through a shift and they don't even recognize that they're doing it. But saying something um, will ultimately just kind of like, eh, like you don't want to point it out necessarily because it's not that big a deal. But in retrospect, you look and you go like, oh, okay, got you. They're, they're dealing with something. There's something going on with them. They're giving their attention to these other areas or this, that, and the other. You know how it goes. It's the liver on the right side of the body. It's right here. Right side. Um, I'm guessing you're asking that because it's probably throbbing a little bit. Are you starting to have some pains right here on your right-hand side? Um, that's an indication that either you're dehydrated, your liver's been stressed out, um, or you're drinking too much. <laughs> hey, buddy, what's up? Uh, it's been too long for me. Rough time lately. Still keeping sober. Thanks for keeping me accountable all day, every day. Dude, Kyler, that's awesome. I'm super duper stoked for you. Hey, life happens and it's going to happen. I just released a video a few minutes ago about it. You look like the dude from Son-in-Law. Uh-oh, did I, did I make a drinking game associated with Paulie Short? I think I did, bitches. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, no, I get that every single day. <laughs> Bruising on the right side. I've never bruised on like my core. <laughs> um, it, it will feel, it, it, okay, I'll say this. It does feel like bruising. Um, sometimes like for instance, you, you guys know I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fit dude. So if I'm in the gym and I'm doing a lot of core, hey, what's up 907? If I'm in the gym and I do a bunch of core work, my side might hurt and I have trouble determining whether or not it's my obliques or it's my liver. Um, to this day, I still have trouble figuring out if my liver is working too hard um, or I'm just kind of like stressing my body out. So I'm very consciously aware of that just because obviously I have PTSD from liver failure. <laughs> uh, two months this weekend. Whoa, that's like two grand, man. Wait, two months, two months. So that's six, 600, 6,000. What am I? What is 30 times? That would be 100. That's three. That's six grand. Yeah, that's six grand in sobriety right there. 30, 60 days plus, plus 60, 600. No math gives me anxiety. I, this is going to be dumb. I'm actually going to do this because my ADHD is messing with all the numbers in my head. If you made <laughs> 100 times 30 equals three. Okay. I did it right. I did it right. That's six grand in sobriety. If you made a hundred dollars a day for every day you didn't drink, you'd have made six grand already. So I want you to remember this. Yeah, I'm not encouraging this, but just so you understand the, the concept of relapse and things like that, this is for everybody. If you made $6,000 in sobriety and then you had one drink or you had two drinks or one night of drinking and you had to pay me $100 for every day you drink after that, you still have a shit ton of money. <laughs> You still earn six grand. So maybe you, you would give back 100. You'd still have $5,900 in sobriety. That's the way we want to look at this stuff. 
is because of that subliminal pressure. So many people are going like, if I relapse, I've lost everything. A relapse only makes sense if you haven't stopped drinking since. Remember this, dude, everybody that's, that is focusing on their sobriety, the point is to develop a healthy relationship with alcohol. To some people, that's no relationship at all. Hey, what up, Randy? Hey, so good to see you. Uh, it's no relationship at all. And then some people, it's just a, like on occasion, that's still healthy. Remember this, a low risk, healthy human being will have no more than seven drinks a week. That's if they're binging. <laughs> Been fighting with my fiance about this. Uh, he said, my days start over. That's called a fixed mindset. And that's a closed loop mindset. So he's 100% incorrect. And I, actually, I'll take it back. I'll take it back. I'm not going to say he's incorrect. That's his perception. Hey, bro. <laughs> I'm at the hospital right now with my fiance that just said, dude, I just responded to you. Yeah, we'll talk about this in a second. So let me just kind of touch on that real quick. Actually, I can merge these two things together. So relapsing. Look, dude, let me start with the with the first one. You cannot do the same shit you did before. If you're in the hospital and you, it's done so, dude, liver failure, you're done. You're done. Not you as a human. Your body has had it. It's had it. It's, it's been hit with a truck. You cannot do the same shit, even close to the same shit. And I mean, like, I'm, like I'm, I'm so incredibly serious about this shit. If you've literally lost an organ and the reason that organ has been sacrificed is because of every decision you made prior, you cannot make those same decisions. You can't because the results are inevitable. We may have stopped him from dying. You guys may be in a good place right now, but if you do the same shit, it's easier. Boom. It almost instantly, you'll be right back. This is why doctors don't qualify people who have basically destroyed their liver with alcohol, a transplant. You've got to change your lifestyle 100%. There's no joking. There's no excuses. There's no reasoning why your body isn't as important as your mental health. You, this is where you start practicing. This is called a forced reflection. I had to do it. It had to happen. I wasn't going to reform myself. I wasn't going to do that on my own. I had to fucking die. Because of that, I've spent the last four years completely changing my lifestyle. Healthy foods, healthy thoughts, lots of water, all the medications, high protein, low sodium. I'll tell you this, man, that 99% of my success is the mind. If you can, or when you practice shifting your perspectives, and thinking healthy thoughts, you're going to get inevitable healthy results. This is why people go, there's no way this guy is a liver failure survivor. Literally, I have people, I, I just did a duet with a guy, guys. This guy is a fucking liar. This guy didn't survive liver failure. Motherfucker, I know it looks like that. That's because of how hard I've worked. Most people won't even do that with a healthy body. But because I don't want to fucking die, and I want to live a life that I love, I put in the fucking work. Your life is a job now. You're not going to like a lot of this shit. It's going to fucking suck. But the best part is, you know exactly what you're working on. Most people have no idea what to do. So they continue running in circles and finding reasons why that's as good as it's going to get. You don't have a choice. Your decisions from here on out is to improve your quality of life or fucking die. Period. It sounds brutal, dirty, and 100. So that's my, that's just how it is, right? So I'm fucking proud of you guys for like kicking so much ass. Like that, it's, it's rugged. It really is rugged. A lot of people, most people, listen to what I'm saying. Most people don't survive the failure. They don't survive that shit. People that drink less than me die more often. So if you're in the hospital and you guys are good, you're getting stable, fucking miracle type shit. It's very rare that happens. So when I talk about the severity of this shit, there's no joking around. I, I don't give a fuck. If you get triggered by someone else with alcohol, good. Kick them in the face. Get them the fuck away from you until you have absolute control over your life. Toxic people are toxic. If they're influencing you, if they're negative, if they're not supporting you, get fucking rid of them. You cannot afford to be the person you used to be. You can't do it. Because what's gonna happen? If you do not evolve, which is what I teach everybody to do, 
If you do not evolve, you're equally capable of going right back down that rabbit hole. The only thing that will remain constant is the evolution, but you have to allow it and you gotta put that fucking time in. Just, it's, life is difficult. You might as well struggle doing something you love instead of struggling to stay alive. So with that said, the more you love you, the more love you generate for yourself, the better of a life you design for you, the easier your life feels because you're better at living it. I love, I, I thank you for bringing up the passion in me because this is the absolute fucking facts. This is why Beyond Sober exists is because of that exact moment. What happens after this? I lost my ability to walk. I had to, the reason I'm as fit as I am is because I want to move my arms. <laughs> The muscle atrophy, dude, losing your ability to flex and to move your legs and to get up and do these things. I didn't want to be that person. I'm a break dancer, man. I'm meant to f fucking fall with style. So everything I've done has been around a regimen that's been improving my quality of life. The better quality of life you live, not just the happier you are, the better quality of life that you live the less of a chance you will ever consider sacrificing your happiness, your success, your abundance, or anything. You just will not do it because you love living your life so fucking much that you will fight for your happiness. That's where you're at. That's technically where we're all at. Some people are just deeper in practice. Hey, legend. <laughs> What's up, girl? How you doing? Love your message. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. So I'm going to do this. My, hom my homie, I think his name's Goose. Like I can't think of like his, his, his TikTok name. He's like, tap the screen. Everybody tap the screen. I don't want to be that guy, but I know how important this information is. So I, I do this when I see somebody's live. I sit here and I just tap the screen. <laughs> if you, <laughs> when I do it, there's like a little bar that's up on top and it says sends likes to the host. I don't know if everybody sees that. If you guys can do that for me for like, I don't know, 30 seconds while I just chat some shit out, I'd really appreciate it. I'm gonna bless the room because everybody's here early. <laughs> I'm gonna burn this age. So if we could tap the screen, get this to other people, get it to the FYP, um, and then our, if you guys feel like sharing it, I'd really appreciate it. I don't wanna be that guy. Just know that there's so many fucking people that uh, can appreciate what we're talking about here today. So TikTok, don't cancel me, it's just Sage. <laughs> we're bringing in the good vibes today. Starting today with a ton of passion. Um, and here's one of those things as not just an empath, but as someone who studies human behavior, I do it all the time for you. Oh, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for sharing. I sincerely appreciate you guys. It's all a communal effort. <laughs> We're making sure that as many people have the opportunity to obviously improve their quality of life. That's what I'm here for. Um, one of these things I'll, I'll say this. I'm starting to notice in my comments, this isn't you guys, um, that people are doing what they do best, bringing in bad vibes. <laughs> right now we're bringing in good vibes. Oh, don't burn the carpet. Don't do that, no. Okay, we're good. Um, <laughs> we're good. Is they're focusing on all the things that are wrong. <laughs> and I'm starting to, it, it's like, it's, it's just, when your message gets lost, you understand what I'm saying? The weasel dropping game. <laughs> so many haters. Yes. I have people in my inbox going, your program doesn't work as, as good as you think it does, bro. What are your credentials? What are your this? Like people need definitive proof on this, that, and the other before they even consider an opportunity. And what they're really good at is finding reasons why it's not going to work for them. And then more importantly, what's really sad is that they attempt to influence other people to steer away from a fucking solution because it won't work for them. I know for a fact it's not going to work for many, many, many people. The same way AA doesn't work for millions of people, this program isn't going to work for everybody either. But it does work for a majority of the people because it comes down to who you are as a person, not what your problem is, which is what most programs fail with. So I'm starting to just realize that even the message of drink water, dude, drink water. People are going, dude, you're killing the earth. You're doing this and you're fucking stupid. Like all this shit. The insults don't bother me at all because I know only unhealthy people say that shit. Like I'm not going to give my emotions to those people. But the point is, is that this brings up my driving force of going, regardless of your feelings, you need to drink water. <laughs> we need to stop overcomplicating our goddamn lives, dude and making things so much more amplified than they need to be just because it's easy. 
the, the video I just put out, I'm like, dude, I can't remember the last time I was like really pissed. I can't remember the last time I was like seriously frustrated. Even as I speak about this right now, I'm just passionate. I'm not pissed. I'm not upset. This is my core. This is my energy. It's my source. It's who I am. And people are taking that and then trying to like manipulate it and shift it. And so with that, I look at this and I go, I will defend this to the bitter fucking end. I will die from liver failure round two to defend the message that we've got to take care of ourselves, period. If I got to die showing you what it's like to take care of yourself, I've been there once. <laughs> I will fight to the death, my death, helping you guys move forward, supporting you where you're succeeding, right? That's the point. <laughs> and so it's just, I, I sometimes forget that TikTok uh, goes through waves people go through waves. <laughs> there's something really fun that's happening. And as soon as there's something like mildly obvious for people to latch onto, they will take it to the next fucking level, level for no reason other than they enjoy being haters. They practice hating behavior. It's just insane. <laughs> hey, from Utah, what did you say to people said you're killing the planet by drinking water? What they're tripping on, and I, I say this because you guys are my family, I have bottles of fucking water. If you got a problem with that, you can fucking bounce. The reason for that is I enjoy drinking water. I'm not going to say the world is going to cleanse itself. The planet's looking out for itself. I'm not chirping on the fucking planet. And I'm also not a shitty person because I have bottles of fucking water. There's plastic fucking everywhere. Most of the people that are talking shit to me about plastic waste aren't doing a fucking thing for the planet. <laughs> so it's just a bunch of people taking like my, my drink water fucking message and then fucking like squandering that shit like it's not important. Like bitch, drink water. I'm, I'm not worried about this shit, dude. I'm worried about the way you fucking think. Like that's sad. The way you conduct yourself is sad, man. Because there are people that, that understand the message and understand the severity behind lubricating your system and go, that was really simple. It's really that simple. Drink water. And then there's people going, this piece of shit, ignorant, motherfucking, two hat wearing, buff poly, killing the planet. <laughs> Here's the quote of the day. If you spend all day shifting words around, you can make anything sound bad. These are facts. <laughs> That's why I'm so great with words. People always want something to bitch about. Yeah, it's totally cool. And so one of the things with that, poly drink, we're drinking. So the thing with that is, um, this is where I go and, and go, you, I, I don't expect everybody to enjoy it. I don't expect everybody to like it. And it's like, if I'm going to go viral again, again, I'd rather it obviously be for something that I'm doing that's positive, which is what I am. It's just that conversation has been completely misconstrued. So now my comments are like, I'm here like actively helping people, supporting people. And it's just comment after comment after comment of people just kind of like wasting my time just talking a bunch of shit. And I'm like, God, this is annoying. Like I'm annoyed with, with the way people act. I'm not annoyed with them. I just, it sucks that there's that direction. Um, it sucks. It's not even annoying. It's just like, come on, dude. Like, where's the good shit? <laughs> you made a video to drink water. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> In the army now, yeah, <laughs> there will always be haters. Yeah, yeah, there's more haters um, out in the past few days. <laughs> and it's so cool. I, I honestly, I don't mind. It's just, um, it's, it's interesting. It's a different type of challenge because you look at where you put your energy, where you put your mind, what you're allowing into your life. And that's the type of shit I don't allow into my life. Makes sense. So because I don't allow that, as in I don't surround myself with people that do or say that shit, seeing people do that, even though it's not something that I project <laughs> or I encourage, it's just really annoying. It's not annoying. That's just the word I'm landing on. It's not annoying. It's sad. That's what it is. I'm not sad. It is sad. <laughs> Thank you for the positivity all day, man. I want to see you guys win 100%. I want, I want you guys to continue fucking growing and expanding and enjoying your lives, dude. We don't have to, uh, we don't have to live or, or a, a negative life, man. I miss you. What's up, Roxanne? We don't have to fucking like seriously make things more difficult for ourselves just because it's easy. Like I think like my first thought just now was a cat. Hey, Rom, thank you so much. Was a cat knocking something off the counter. 
It's really easy to do that, but it creates a fucking mess. <laughs> if that's a glass of water and you, you practice knocking shit off the counter, you're gonna make a mess, dude. You're fucking with the world at that point. Just because it's easy doesn't mean we have to do it. We have no obligation to do anything. So I want everybody to remember this, dude. If you guys can remind yourself of this as often as possible, what you decide to do is the best that you can do at the time. It's the best you got. If you could have done something better or if you were capable of doing something in a different way, you would have done it that way. This is why so many people have guilt about the things they did in the past. Here's the facts. The reason you have guilt is because the person you are now would never do that shit. And it sucks that you got to take the heat on that. But the reality is, my dude, what up? But the reality with that is, you weren't this version of you back then. So to hate on you forever is just literally punishing yourself for no reason, for someone else's mistake. So when you look at, hang on, I feel my whole life change. <laughs> I gotta read that, that's a good one. Congrats on being prego. I'm always pregnant with information. Um, dude, I feel the whole life changing positively. Just have to work out the sheep and, and the headache. <laughs> I get you, 100%. Um, who's Prego? Is somebody Prego? That sounds cool. That's fucking congrats, dude. That's off the chain. Uh, do you think your program helps loved ones? Of that? Absolutely. 100%. One of the coolest things, if you go check out the video that's on the main page, so go to Beyond Sober Program or just click the link in the bio, uh, hit Beyond Sober, watch that video because part of that video I created for you, you're pregnant, Chelsea, is that what it is? Am I tripping? I, I need some verification before I fucking flip out for you. Uh, the point is, is that when we understand the mind of an addict or an alcoholic, how they're thinking, what they're doing, how they're feeling, then Chelsea, you're pregnant. Oh, fuck you! Yeah! Woo! You're breaking in a whole new world. That's fucking badass. I'm so excited for you. That is so dope. The, you you now have minds for molding. <laughs> I just had the the fucking what is that? Jack Black, School of Rock, <laughs> minds for molding, dude. I want you to understand this. This is so badass for you, Chelsea, because you care about you, because you care about your future, because you're so invested in your expansion and personal growth. I want you to know that the more you take care of you, the more your baby, <laughs> the more your kids, the more everybody around you is literally going to absorb that energy, that compassion, that kindness, that understanding. Remember, Everything we do, everything we feel is injected into everything that we touch. Thank you so, so much. So when I say this and go, kids are sponges, I learned to live by watching kids. Literally, everything's a fucking toy if you play with it. Where I'm going with this is the more solid you find yourself through practice, through like showing up here, beyond sober, any type of personal development program, that energy, that essence is literally shared with the people around you. So if you are working on you right now and you're growing as a human being, all of that love and all of that energy and all that positivity and gratitude and expression is going to be handed off and influenced to this soul that's on its way. I'm so excited for you, man. Wow. Wow. And I say that because if I knew I was having a kid, I'd be like, this, is, this kid's going to take over the world. <laughs> just because of a feeling, right? So I'm, I'm so stoked for you that it, it confetti all day. It's raining, it's raining amazingness. How bad ass. I, I'm so excited. Yo, just found you. I can go on TikTok online and avoid my bad cell service. Dude, that's dope. Uh, I can watch the legend of 4K. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, hang on. Is it weird to have so much to do and be bored? 100%. The reason why this happens, and I'm gonna say this just because I have extreme ADHD, um, there's infinite things to do and none of them are going to give you dopamine. Dopamine is that we'll say happy juice. So what happens with this is a lot of times people go, I got so much shit to do. I could do anything. I got to clean the house. I got to do this. Got to wash the car. I got to make this phone call, send these emails. I got to go to work. Got to do all this shit. I'm just going to take a nap. None of that shit is entertaining to you. And because it's not entertaining, you get bored, you literally lose interest and you intentionally remove interest because none of that shit is actually going to bring you any closer to more happiness. It's just shit you gotta do. So this is actually, I talked about this today um, in one of my videos, practicing the mantis mindset in Beyond Sober, the mindset that I kind of help people develop is 
how CEOs and successful and happy people uh, process their daily routines. When you've got a bunch of shit to do and you don't want to be bored, it's your obligation to entertain yourself. This is why you need the ADHD help. Hell yeah. So soon, I will definitely stay connected. If everybody hasn't connected with me with the link in my bio, drop your information. Let's just swap email addresses. Um, do that because we are launching um, an ADHD extension of the Beyond Sober program because most people that have addictive personalities or um, struggle with alcohol or drugs or anything like that, they have ADHD. <laughs> And so what we want to do is make sure that everybody who's in the program has access to our uh, partner network uh, to get extreme control and literally harness your ADHD to work for you. This is why I talk about this. The reason why I've been so successful is because I've been able to harness the power of my ADHD, my excessive thoughts and my racing you know, emotions and all that shit. You get a hold of this shit and then you apply it with, with uh, hyper focus. Because of that, through practice, which is what I teach everybody how to do, um, you're able to create more happiness, success, and abundance for you guys to take your life to the next level. That's also what's in Beyond Sober. Uh, hang on. So, Cody, thank you so much for your, your lives. I cannot say how much they help and speak to me. That's so awesome. Uh, simply because you said that, you guys can go to my website right here, Cody.io. Click on Live Replay. There's like 65 hours of me up there. Every Friday, I download all the lives for the week and I put up, what is it, five to like 10 more hours of content. So if I'm not live, you guys can reconnect and, and come obviously watch a replay. That's how Michelle took all these screenshots or video uh, recordings and put the laughing compilation together. <laughs> That's so funny. Thank you, man, you rock. I appreciate you, thank you. I knew I was here for a reason. I never had a problem staying sober, just everything else. Remember this, what we do is a reflection of how we think, okay? So if we're thinking, <laughs> so if we're thinking certain thoughts repetitively, um, that becomes a habit. We call this habitual thinking. <laughs> laughing compilation is amazing. Day 10, love your program. Thank you so much. I love hearing that. I sincerely appreciate you. I truly appreciate people like you in the world. Thank you so much. Um, so we gotta look at this and go, what type of, we'll say thoughts, do I think habitually? Habitually means what have I created a habit around? For instance, the way I'm sitting right now, when my back, when I'm trying to stretch my back, I have a habit of stretching my leg out like this, right? I am stretching. <laughs> I was supposed to hit the gym this morning, but decided I needed to give my body a break because I'm gonna be in the gym tonight. So we look at all the thoughts. We look at, joining from Scotland, fuck yeah, dude! Uh, <clears throat> we look at the habits, the way we think, the type of patterns that we have that we've created. Most of us have created habitual thought processes from a place of survival or struggle. The trip with that is when you're actively trying or attempting to move forward, hell yeah, Alaska! Those habits that you have from your thoughts, your thought habits, don't work. You can't think in survival mode when you're in thriving mode. <laughs> You can't thrive if you're trying to survive. It just doesn't make sense. So we have to develop new thought patterns because what happens is once we kind of accept new thought patterns, then we open the doors to new opportunities and new feelings. Those feelings dictate our actions. And most people have a habit of allowing a feeling to rush in and then dampening that with alcohol. <laughs> That's what we want to stay away from. This is why the people that focus on their mindset and that state of evolution don't go back to drinking and find themselves as an ex-alcoholic or an ex-addict. Someone that's been there, done that, doesn't want it anymore and is strong enough to say no and be proud of that information. Super fucking dope. I see questions in here. Caffeine. Oh my God, I love caffeine. Uh, <clears throat> would you recommend this program for food addicts? Yes. The way that I say this is... Keep in mind, the reason I designed Beyond Sober is because hundreds of thousands of comments to the point of overload. I've gone viral four, five times talking about alcohol. Those comments, thousands, man, like, like, like I can't, lost count. <laughs> it's how do I stop? What do I do? So I designed Beyond Sober and you'll hear the word alcohol, not often, but often enough um, throughout that. If you swap that word out with food, it, it, the, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same because it's about habits. It's about you. It's about the core. It's not about your problem. It's not actually about alcohol. 
So when I say, this is why we tend to drink alcohol, you swap that with, this is why we tend to eat food. <laughs> food, uh, cigarettes, like nicotine, sugar, all that stuff, they all release dopamine. Dopamine, the happy chemical, is the reason why we associate uh, happiness and joy with poison, with alcohol, with food, with all that shit. We've literally created a neurological pathway in practice serving our emotions with alcohol. So this is what we do through the program is practice rewriting, right? Your connections with dopamine and whatnot. Water is dopamine. Conversation is dopamine. Healthy food is dopamine because when you look at healthy foods, Keep in mind, even dudes in the gym last night were like, dude, how do you do it? I'm like, are you still eating all carbs in this? Yeah, but my job. Yeah, but my this. Yeah, but my whatever. Bro, you've strengthened the connection to excuses. <laughs> You're finding, yeah, dopamine blocker. Yeah. So what happens is we just practice finding reasons why we need that thing or can't get that thing because of this thing and like all this shit. If we keep practicing finding reasons why it's not going to work, it's not going to. So this is why we practice rewriting your association, improving your dopamine release without uh, overindulging in food or nicotine or sugar or fucking pills or whatever that shit is, whatever. So when you work on you as a human being, all of the problems that are really upsetting you, those ultimately dissipate. It's super badass. Um, I actually wrote a large Facebook post about, about the need of more dopamine and I found TikTok to give it. Dude, that's badass. Hell yeah. <laughs> Follow um, uh, Journey to ADHD. If you guys don't know who that is, his name's Matt. Super amazing guy. A lot of his content is dopamine uh, associated. So a lot of people with ADHD, we're constantly chasing the dopamine. That's like, for instance, I'm in the gym. I'm only in the gym 45 minutes a day. I'll be there physically an hour, but I'll, I'll stop my workout at like 50 minutes and I'll go sit there <laughs> and I'm done. But the point is, is that the amount of dopamine and the amount of progress that I have in 45 minutes is far more than enough than I ever got drinking alcohol 15 hours a day. Chasing the dopamine dragon, 100%. So there's a lot of science involved with, you know, um, uh, the execution and the expansion of the mind. We think that we, we just get our data and that's it. We gotta practice, man. We gotta, this is why I keep saying, you gotta keep doing stuff. Hell yeah, from Texas. Wasn't it just snowing there yesterday? Somebody on TikTok's like, dude, it was, it was snowing. <laughs> uh, is there a module uh, on guilt? Yes, that's module four. It's called Back to the Future. Um, the reason I put that as module four is because, I'll say this, if you want to unlock everything, it's an extra 10 bucks. That 10 bucks is it's literally to feed your dopamine so you can go straight to the module opposed to unlocking it. So it's called an all access pass. You have access to absolutely everything instead of going through the program step by step. But module four is called Back to the Future. And so we, I put that there specifically because so many people keep running the same thoughts on the same circumstances, the same people, the same emotions, getting the same results. And what we've associated with that emotion is alcohol or food or whatever that is. So <laughs> what I want you to do, the way I set it up, is once you understand acceptance, how your life is based around habits, and you've already started developing new healthy habits, it means that by the time you get to module four, your mood is improved, your understanding of self is improved, you've, you've already seen some results, you're already feeling better, and you're prepared to look at your past in a different way, in a healthy way. Because a lot of people, <laughs> they kind of fear that module sometimes because they don't want to feel those feelings. You gotta remember this, the worst thing that can ever happen to us is an emotion. Facts. I don't want to break up because you don't want to feel like shit. I don't want to break up because I don't want to feel betrayed. You stay in relationships because you don't want to feel the feeling. We want to embrace these feelings. We only got to feel them once. A lot of people think you have to feel that feeling every single time you see that thing. And they practice. Even if they don't feel it, they still act out the emotion that may or may not even be there. That's with practice. And so, you get good at anything you practice, including talking about your shit. Just because someone said this, you don't have to say anything. You don't even have to have a fucking feeling. This is why I was saying yesterday, when I put that video out, there's a lot of people that are going to be pissed at what I'm about to say. And that's because I've practiced living such a happy life 
that it's really difficult for me to get pissed and disappointed and frustrated and depressed or just like just upset with myself. You know what I'm saying? When you live so far outside of a negative realm, it's hundreds of happy days and then one awkward day opposed to hundreds of awkward days and one happy day. That's how most people live their lives. And this is why we develop these fucking habits. That's why I want to help you guys, you know, evolve 100%. I'm definitely bombarded with all the feels. <laughs> I love that. What? That's, that's a beautiful thing. You're a fucking human being. <laughs> You're human. That's the human experience, man. We want to feel these things, right? We don't have to, but we want to. We want to experience it. I want to experience... You, you think I'm like... I don't know. How do you say this shit? Less of a man, whatever the fuck that means, because I cry or tear up or have an emotional response at Kleenex commercials? Bitch! That's beautiful! <laughs> that's amazing! Do you know how fucking tender that is, man? God damn, having empathy, feeling other people's emotions and shit? Uh, <laughs> so we look at that. I went to rehab. Hang on. Went to rehab twice and uh, twice and tried AA. It wasn't for me. Uh, it works for somebody. Yeah, I get you, man. I even talk about this. In the video that I just put out on the homepage, it's like most people don't want to sit in a room and trauma bond with people they've never met. <laughs> most of the complaints that I get, most of the, the people who are upset with AA and these other programs is that's where I went to get alcohol. That's where I went to find drugs. That's where I went to connect. That's where I went to find this. Nothing good ever came of that. And so because of that, I've taken all that information and go, well, instead of trauma bonding and talking about your problems, let's create a community where we all talk about what's working well for us. It doesn't mean that you can't talk about, oh, well, my mom just died and I had this and I drank and I had a glass of wine and this and that. That's great. We're not going to sit here and tell you our stories on how we feel like shit and how we dealt with that shit. We all practice supporting each other in ways that actually work. It's, it's, it's positive reinforcement. Hey man, I understand that your mom died. That fucking sucks. But the most beautiful thing about this is, and then we continue on or try this, try this, do this, do these things, right? Let's move forward together because that's what life is about. It's about sharing the experience and influencing each other's success. I find myself just laying there. Even when I set time to sleep, uh, and put my phone down, I get you, uh, practicing sleeping, <laughs> I actually, I have a bedtime. Um, I was chatting with somebody last night and, uh, and I was like, dude, it's, it's this time. I don't need to explain myself. I don't need to do anything other than put my fucking phone down. Here's the trip. <laughs> I thought you were probably showing for a sec. <laughs> time for me to drink. Um, is that you got to reset your mind. It's called resetting your mind to default mode. This hurts. <laughs> resetting your mind to default mode is basically kind of like, Hey, butterfly panda. Thank you so much. It's winding your mind down. And I'll say this because I'll be on TikTok for, I don't know, an hour, two hours. And then when I'm there, you would think like, how do you take in so much data and then go to sleep? It's because I practice resetting my mind. And this is how I do it. I do, it's the same concept of counting sheep, but the difference is, is I trick my mind into doing this infinite loop, a loop that doesn't fucking end. So I'll, I'll start counting. First thing I do, I, I encourage everybody to pr try this shit. See if it works. You got to actively remove your tongue from the roof of your mouth. <laughs> That's like the initiation. <laughs> Most of the time when we're laying there, our tongue is, it has this subliminal pressure. It's pressing on the top of our mouth. So when you're ready to sleep, this is what I do every night, is I check my tongue, drop it, make sure I'm not putting pressure on the roof of my mouth. Tension. Yes. Thank you. Or remove that tension, relax my jaw, right? Sometimes I relax it so much that when I'm on my left side, I feel my jaw, the weight, the gravity actually shift my jaw. So I got to put like a pillow or something right here. Make sure it's just sitting. That's how relaxed I get my jaw. So there's less tension, less pressure, all that shit. The next thing I do is I run a sequence of numbers, okay? And I start with one and then I go to nine and then I go back to two. So listen to what I'm saying. This is what works for me. I encourage everybody to try it and we'll talk about it later. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, three. The reason I do that is because if I go 10, here's the trip with the way the mind works. 
if you don't close the loop, such as if you keep, if you try and count to 100, if you can count to 100, then you'll keep counting, counting, counting. You're expecting new information. Your brain's gonna go, I know what to expect, it's already there, 13, and then 14, and then 15. That is, that's creating focus. But when you bore your mind out with a loop, nine, two, three, four, nine, two, three, four, your brain goes, I'm not going anywhere, so I'm gonna stop giving my attention to this shit. Now your brain, your mind is full of this counting. I don't remember falling asleep last night. I remember looking at the phone going, like, it's 1045, 1045, Phone down, it was 10.49. Normally I go to sleep at 11.11, and then I fucking woke up. <laughs> I put it down, I practice that shit, I don't remember falling asleep. That's amazing. And that happens a majority of the nights, so I get a lot of sleep. But I'm also drinking water. A lot of people won't like this, man. I drink like a quarter bottle of water before I go to sleep. So my body has something to process, I'm well lubricated. Yes, I might get up at 4 a.m., but I just got like five hours of really good deep sleep. So it's easy for me to go back to sleep uh, if, I have, like, if I have to get up. So the point with all that is you wanna set a bedtime, set a regimen. I also put my phone on the other side of the room. I do not have it next to me because my brain will get curious and pick the fucking phone up. <laughs> and then guess what? It's two in the morning and I'm on TikTok. There's no difference. <laughs> so I make sure that all of my technology is off, TV's off, lights are off, everything's off. The only thing that I can hear is a fan. And this is white noise because of my tinnitus. If I don't have white noise in the room, this screaming, screeching sound will keep me awake. Like this, I don't know what silence sounds like anymore. That's actually why I wear this. Um, so now that I, my body and my mind knows, my phone is inaccessible. And the only way that I can get that is if I commit to staying awake, I, I would rather just stay comfortable and then my brain will just kind of like reset and then I'll wake up. It's super duper dope. It takes practice. It took me a few, few different techniques to figure that one out, but that's the one that works for me, okay? Relax your jaw, remove the tongue from the roof of your mouth, tell yourself time to go to sleep, I'm going to sleep, going to sleep, start your counting sequence, let your brain get bored, and uh, then I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Hey everyone, good morning, drinking water at the gym. Fuck yeah, day 42. That's 4,200 bucks in sobriety right there. Uh, can't fall asleep without a fan, I get you. ADHD will do that to you too. Um, I can't get tired, I can get tired of Candy Crush. I get you, man. Um, everybody's mind is different, but the, the formulas and the techniques, uh, they do work. It's super duper powerful. Uh, just because we got so many amazing people in here, I gotta remind you a couple different things. You guys pick one. Uh, if you could share the live, awesome. We got 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes, depending on what the conversation is. If you could tap the screen, get it to the FYP, awesome. But I'm also encouraging everybody that hasn't connected with me with the link in my bio. There's just a little form right there, dude. We can actually swap information, swap email. So I might email you guys later. That's directly from me. So if you guys have questions or you guys want to set some time up on the calendar, we could obviously stay connected with that. I send random videos. Plus, I also put everybody on the drink water list, the survivor list. And so what that does is every day I reach out with new messages, with a, a personal video and be like, hey, what's up, man? We're drinking water. It's helping everybody practice thinking water, being water, thinking healthy, being healthy, doing healthy. Um, so I send them at random times throughout the day or, or per day. So one might, you might get one at 11, you might get one at four. <laughs> the point is, is that uh, we get a chance to stay connected. You, go, you could also respond to those messages. This goes straight to me. So I say this because I'm very, very, very involved with the community. So I don't want people to think that there's some like, that, like it's not me responding. Sometimes people think I'm a robot. Even last night, they're like, do you even sleep? Yeah, it's only 1030. <laughs> I'll be asleep in 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, just open Mantis. So excited, dude. That's awesome. I was just talking about Mantis today. I put two videos out about the Mantis mindset. Um, super powerful stuff. Incredibly powerful stuff. Mantis is next level shit. <laughs> and as you go through that, you'll start to notice um, how I related Mantis mindset inside the Beyond Sober program. Because everybody that's in Beyond Sober is basically being drip fed concepts that I teach in Mantis. And Mantis is a full on mindset, a way of looking at life, a way of looking at yourself, the way you look at other people, the way you interpret your success, the amount of actual happiness and gratitude and appreciation you have for you. 
the regimens you put together, when you take action to see your life through a different lens, Mantis, <laughs> 2,500. <laughs> that right there, yeah. I used to sell it at 33,000. That's how much Mantis is worth. It's for CEOs, it's for entire organizations. Um, everybody that graduates through Beyond Sober automatically pre-qualifies for Mantis. That's because there's a lot of people that go, what do I do next? What's next? What, 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 I, I, wanna, I still wanna continue growing. Cool, well let me show you how to build an organization. I'll, I'll say it like this. How is it that I'm able to deliver a message, influence so many people, and help people grow? If I didn't know how to do that strategically, then I would just be some other dude on TikTok talking a bunch of shit. <laughs> but the reality is, is it's branding, it's communication, it's expansion, it's personal development, technical development, regimens, everything from advanced mindset to advanced marketing. It's incredible the amount of data that's in there. There's, there's fuck, how much, like 60 hours of me in there just teaching. It's fucking powerful, man. Um, I've been syndicated for that twice. Um, it's been talked about in Pakistan, all over the place. That's, that's my main, main business. Uh, we trust people named Trump Lord. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I don't know. I, I'm just good. I, here's, I'm going to create this very realistic expectation. I'm going to expect that, uh, I'm not even going to say it. If it happens, I'll put a video out about it. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh my good. Hey Cody, what's up? Shiloh. Sh is that my, am I reading that right? My contact's working for me? Shiloh, what up? Uh, anyone that doesn't want to be here growing, question, why are you here? A lot of people don't know what to do with their time. And I want you to remember this. Here, here's, here's the quote of the day. Even the villain thinks they're the good guy. Every super villain that there is thinks that what they're doing is right. That's why they're so good at being the bad guy. They feel down to a core level that what they're doing is good for the greater good of fellow of their man, of their woman, of the whatever. They all think and feel being un, like undeniably that they are the superhero, the villain. You got to keep in mind, we look at that perception and go, the villain's the bad guy, right? The bad guy thinks they're good too. That's why they're so committed to being the bad guy. They feel that they have to seriously hone in and hold down the fucking fort. And from that fort, they feel that what they're doing is going to make a difference when in all actuality, they're just bringing attention to how unhealthy they are, right? Like, it's weird. When we use words like trash can, we're actually, that's a reflection of the mind. When you think like trash, you are trash. Only people who are unhealthy use words like that and find reasons why the information in front of them is actually a challenge. Now, from a digital standpoint, we don't have anything to fear except for your, your, your fragile egos. <laughs> so that's why we have so many villains that decide to try and take out the good guys, right? Here's the other thing. Winners focus on the win. Losers focus on the winners. And that's why I have so many fucking beautiful haters that love to improve my quality of life by showing me how healthy and abundant and graceful and uh, we'll say gracious and empathetic and understanding I actually am because that's human nature. I'm not going to hate on somebody because they're hating on me. That's just me being a hater. That's literally transforming into the version of somebody that I'm actively not interested in. So I'm not going to hate on I'm not even going to give that person or whoever the fuck it is my emotions, right? I might give them a little bit of time, right? Over time, all things will shift, new perspectives and understandings, right? But the reality with all of this stuff is that I don't have to defend, explain. I don't need to get to know these people. These people do not know me. Actually, you guys do. You guys know enough about me to place a positive judgment and to understand the core of who I am. Right? And that's the whole point, is we want to practice seeing people for who they are and what they are. So we'll just say this. Um, if you were to document what you do all day long, you'll be able to see exactly what type of person you are. So let's just say this. If I spent every 15 minutes going into other people's lives and actively attempting to disrupt the room, and you wrote that on paper, 
I was an absolute piece of shit for 30 minutes today. I went into four lives and decided to talk a bunch of shit to people and disrupt an entire conversation in an attempt to conquer a room. Here's the thing. He did win. He's got my fucking attention. But the point with that is my attention is voluntary. I am under no obligation to give anybody anything, right? And I choose to use this information as a way to obviously talk about growth, right? Look at what's being said. Contrast that against your own thoughts. If you don't think like that, then you are one of the healthiest people that you fucking know. Can you imagine walking into every single room and being the most unhealthy person in every room that you walk into? That's just crazy. That's banana sandwiches. <laughs> that sucks, man. That definitely sucks. I can only imagine, dude. It's, it's such a trip. Oh my goodness. That is such a, that is such a um, beautiful thing. <laughs> All right, so I took that motherfucker out. <laughs> because here, here's the thing, man. Do you show up to disrupt or do you show up to add value? That's the point of it. Banana sandwiches. <laughs> I'm phenomenal. Thank you so much. Is that Sarah? Oh, Sarah, what up? Not only is Sarah uh, an amazing human being, but she's got her own program. She's also one of the Beyond Sober coaches. This woman is magical. She's been in the, not just the industry, but the scene for 25 years, helping families um, realign their values and improve their communication and help people literally design a life that they love to live, man. So if you're not following Sarah, I'm highly encouraging you to do that. Sarah has had a chance to meet with so many amazing people from here on TikTok, people that are inside the Beyond Sober program. So what's really cool, hey, love your program. So Melissa, for example, say you wanted to chat with Sarah, she's accessible too. She's got her own individualized programs. Uh, we've been talking to a couple other people who are interested in being uh, sobriety coaches as well. So we'll say we've got Lisa. We, I've been talking to Lisa, she's like, I'll be a coach, let me be a coach. Lisa's a boss. She's like, kind of like Boston. I'm not gonna, uh, sh nope, nope, shush, shush. <laughs> she takes no shit. Some people enjoy that type of personality, so she's got her own program. Sarah, she's not only, she's got a fitness program, dude, she's got all kinds of amazing shit. She's also building out her master platform. So ideally, what, what, what I'd love to see is this continued state of expansion. So you might graduate through Beyond Sober and then jump into Wisco Kids program, and then from there have access to Sarah's program and Lisa's program and ADHD and all that stuff. That's what I'm saying, man. You, as you guys decide to stay connected with us, as we grow, you grow. The reason we do what we do and the reason we're so good at what we do is because it's designed with you in mind. It's literally designed from the core out, <laughs> from inside out. And that's why it's so powerful. So I'm super duper stoked. Hang on, I got a couple questions right here. Uh, what is Sarah's at? You can see her right there. Is this Sarah, he says, he says moderator here, Sarah the Savage Mom. She is though. She so is. <laughs> uh, definitely follow Sarah. She's right here. So Sarah, keep posting throughout some, some hearts real quick so everybody can uh, obviously follow you. Here's one of the things though. Here's ideally what we want. We want to make sure that all of our sobriety coaches have the ability to go live just like this. Because remember this, I may say a bunch of things that can trigger emotions and help you come to some conclusions. Sarah may be the woman that drives it home for you. So this is why when we help each other succeed to reach more people, like tapping on the screen, sharing the live, following moderators, things like that, we're able to help people get more individualized results based on who they are and who you are, right? So with that, man, I, I appreciate everybody that's not just supporting me, but the program and Sarah, Wisco Kid, and all the other sobriety coaches that are, that are swinging through the program. We're all, we all win when we all win. <laughs> you guys have really been through it and know exactly how to advise. Thank you. I sincerely appreciate that, kitties. When people question our credentials, we go, motherfucker, I died. <laughs> I've been there. Like, you, 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 want my, you want my plaques? Like, I have to have a plaque for you to tell you what it feels like to die? What are you talking about? So there's a lot of people that look for reasons why someone isn't valued in their profession or can't deliver or won't deliver or isn't delivering truth. If we continue challenging things that are, then we find reasons why they're not. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
if we continue challenging things they are, then we continue finding reasons why they're not. Quote of the day. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> If you continue looking for reasons why it's not going to work for you, it's not going to work for you. Everything is exactly what you think it is until you find reasons why it's not. Listen to what I'm saying. This goes with anything. It's a leaf. Is it a leaf? Yeah. No, it's not. That's a shadow. No, it's a leaf. No, that's a shadow. It looks like a leaf. It's a leaf. <laughs> you can defend the fact that it's a leaf all you want. And you're going to continue looking for reasons why it's a leaf and not a shadow. But when you look at that information and go, uh, you know what? You're right. <laughs> you know what? It's an airplane. Yeah, exactly. Like looking in the clouds. Same kind of concept. It's a baby. No, it's not. I don't see that. Well, if you look for reasons why it is a baby in the clouds, you'll probably see it. You got to look quick, though, because it's moving. You didn't. You see what I'm saying? So this is why we want to practice putting ourselves in this position to go, what is this without my emotions? What is this guy without two hats? What is this data without my preconceived notions? What is this information? When you see things from an objective standpoint, meaning without emotion, you're able, it's truth, seek the truth. You're able to see it for what it actually is. Regardless of your opinions, regardless of how people feel, regardless of how people feel about you, you're still an amazing person. You're still doing amazing things. Even if we remove the word amazing, you're still a human. That's enough. And if you're human, you probably act human too. <laughs> that gives you a little bit of wiggle room when you're trying to grow, when you're actively focused on your growth. It's cool, man, because you're a human. That's what humans do. Hell yeah. Did you fuck up? Good. That's what humans do. <laughs> then we find we embrace the fact that that's a human trait, right? And then we stop beating ourselves up. Yeah, we're well, trying something really difficult, dude. Of course, it's going to be rugged. Of course, you're going to have an emotional response. Of course, you're not going to get it on the first try. If you did, that'd be weird. That'd be less human, <laughs> right? A lot of what you say is found in evidence-based recovery. Mo yeah, exactly. Thank you. Um, what I what I talk about is kind of like, wh what is that shit called? Uh, damage resistance or something like that? Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Um, Sarah knows. Oh shit! <laughs> Love you. Holy shit! You have an uh, intrinsic value just because you exist. Dude, Jamie. Okay, you see Love's strength and blessings? Follow Jamie. She's amazing, dude. I'll never forget this for the rest of my life. Jamie, we still gotta do a couple things. We we had our first time, our first our first chat. And this is why I talk about dude emotions, but you gotta feel them. When you allow yourself to feel, you find connection instantly. I talked about this today in Mantis Mindset. Jamie and I had this conversation, our first chance to meet, and we were sharing stories, man, and she, she told me this. She's like, Cody, you know, growing up, you gotta understand like the way we connect to certain words, the way, that, hey, there's Michelle. Is this my first time you just showed up? God damn it. I had to kick out Trumpsters and all kinds of shit. Where were you? <laughs> I'm hating you forever. Just kidding. Life happens, man. Welcome, welcome. So check it out. I was talking to Jamie. And she says, uh, she's like, you know, if you replace the word, you know, attention with the word connection, it changes the entire environment. It changes the way you, you recall your past. And she says, because we were talking about what I did as a kid, what I did, I was always in the limelight. Fuck, I was a DJ for 16 years. Thousands of people looking at me all the time. And she says, dude, replace the word, you know, attention with connection. And then I go back and I was like, I was always seeking attention. I was always in people's faces. I was always doing backflips. Everybody knew where I was because I was always wanting attention. Nah, man, I was wanting connection. And she was absolutely 100% correct. And that warped my whole fucking life. It's amazing what happens when you're open to meeting new people. When you, when you give yourself the opportunity to grow, when you meet people. Bali Short, this is going to be my last one. When you give people um, moments of your time, when you put yourself in a place of reception and curiosity, I was curious about Jamie. I wanted to get to know Jamie. She's an incredible human being. So many amazing things. She's working on every single fucking day, constantly growing, right? And so we have this conversation. I'm like, damn, both her and I are like, Ugh, you're right. <laughs> the connection is one of the reasons we're here. 100% Jamie, we talk about that, a real connection 
you can disappear forever and then come back and have the same exact connection. That's a real bond, a real deep connection. I also talked about this in Mantis Mindset Part 1 and 2 today. So my last two videos, if you haven't seen that, I, I'm highly encouraging you to take a look at those two videos because the deeper you know you, the more self-aware you are, the more you're able to instantly connect with people in a very strong way, create a strong connection to people that help you grow, that actually support your success, uh, to people who are going to encourage you to move forward, people who are more like you than they are different. This is why we want to, <laughs> Yoda Cody, <laughs> she named me that too. You see, look, like everyone's got like different names and shit, right? So <laughs> she used to say this shit, man, Yoda Cody. <laughs> it's so awesome, man. I, I love these things because I love seeing or hearing how other people interpret this energy and all that stuff. And, and it's, a, it's a driving force to, to be impactful enough for people to go, that's, that's what I like. That's, that's what I want. And some people are sitting here going like, dude, you're only talking about yourself. There's nobody else in the room here. <laughs> I'm, of course I'm gonna talk about me, it's my experience. It's my experience that brings us together because I'm showing us how we're all related. People are pissed that I'm talking about how happy I am. Listen to that. I'm gonna say this again. People are thoroughly fucking triggered that I'm putting videos out that I'm not a negative person. What the actual? Like, it's not, it's not mind-boggling. I really just say that just to say it. I get it. And this is why I opened that video with some people aren't going to like this. I'm telling you guys this, man. People are going to find reasons why you ain't shit and why you are shit. No matter what you do. Here's the trip. You do something that's a little off-character, people that know you are going to find reasons why you're, you're the shit. And they're going to give you leeway for that. People that don't know you are going to look at the good things you do and find reasons why you ain't shit. I'm going to say this one more fucking time. This is just how it works. This is why I feel like I'm right in the middle of all this shit. And this is why, why I practice this stuff. People that don't know you are going to look at your successes and find reasons why you don't deserve it. When you or if you tend to fuck up or act off character, the people that know you are going to find reasons why that's okay. And this is the fucking statement. This is number three today. The people that matter to you don't mind. But the people that mind don't fucking matter. Fuck them. Get it? This is something that you've got to repeat to yourself and understand. This is why this, this goes back to the core of you being human. You are fucking human. So Brandon, look at this shit. You could do all kinds of shit. I, from my perception of you, this is a bad mama Gemma. He's showing up, he's putting in work, he's taking, dude, he, he's getting his wife involved, dude. Like all this shit. He's working on his relationship, dude. Like he shows up, he's investing in himself. Fuck yeah. If I heard something or saw something, I'd be like, Brandon, <laughs> what the actual fuck, bro? I know you're better than that. And you would go, I am too. Cool. But if I didn't know you, I'd be like, that motherfucking piece of shit did what? Fuck that guy. You know what I'm saying? So this is why we want to get to know ourselves because the way that I respond to you as a reflection of how I feel about myself. You just quoted Dr. Seuss? Did I? That's, is that a, a Dr. Seuss quote? It's the most simple shit, but it's so fucking true. They can know you, but they have to know your soul truly and deeply, exactly. 100%. So with that said, before I get ready for this appointment here, who am I meeting with today? Um, where is that button? Uh, ADHD, where is that button? There it is. See if it's not there. I can't see it. Um, with that said, where was I going? I was going to say something. I was going to say something. Oh, okay. So here it is. So uh, this is great. Thank you. Because I want to end with this. Um, know you. They have to know your soul truly, deeply, exactly. Okay. This is why it's so fucking important to be your authentic self. To be you. 100%. As close to 100 as fucking possible. Because that's showing people who you fucking are. And they, first off, they're gonna make a decision. Is this person for me or are they not? Are they for me or no? No, they're not. Okay, yes they are. Regardless of what you're actually showing people, people will still respect the fact that you're being you, 100%. Your most authentic self. 
And I'll say this because I hear this every fucking day and I think it's beautiful. I get this from Gary Vee and, and all kinds of people is I met with Nathan yesterday and Nathan goes, dude, it's like interacting with the program right now. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? He says, well, I've watched you just like this for like a week and now I see you on the same screen and you're in the same position with the same light. We're in the same, same gear, but you're talking back to me. This is fucking crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> He says, you're the same person. Like, he says, that's not a personality. You're absolutely correct. That is me, authentic. Uh, whether I'm in the fucking gym, walking on the street, on the roof, <laughs> or here on TikTok, it doesn't matter. You guys get me 100, and that's what I want you guys to practice, is being unapologetically fucking you. Not being that asshole that everybody thinks you are. If you are, you have to accept it, but that's not cool, bro. <laughs> but be unapologetically you. Disappear when people want your attention. Don't give them your fucking attention if you don't want to. Be you. People will 100% gravitate to your authenticity and your fucking soul, dude. That's what you guys get, right? And it allows you to just be fucking free. It's not just be free, you feel free. Wisco kid in the building. <laughs> Wait, is that Wisco? Oh, I'm tripping. ADHD, that was Brandon. It's just Brandon. <laughs> that motherfucker. I love you, bro. I love Gary Vee. Gary Vee's off the chain. So with that said, you guys, I do gotta prepare. So who am I meeting with in a few minutes here? I'm gonna be meeting with Jesse. If Jesse's in here, word! What up? Let's make magic, man. I'm super stoked to fucking meet you. Super stoked to put these things in alignment for you before you jump into the program. So stoked to have a chat and to swap stories, man. One of the coolest things that I, that I get to do now that I've opened my calendar up for is to hear your story, man. I'm here to grow too. So with that is, you know, once again, if you guys are even remotely interested in either chatting with me, jumping inside the Beyond Sober program, definitely consider that. Click the link in my bio, hit Beyond Sober, or drop your information and I'll send everything over to you. And you guys can just watch that video. It's, it's, it's just a, a couple minute explainer of what the Beyond Sober is all, uh, program is all about. Maybe it's for you, maybe it's not. The coolest part is it's lifetime access. So you guys don't have to worry about continued subscriptions or investments long term or anything like that. You're in, you're in for life. So as we grow, you grow. So the, the better I, there's that notification. <laughs> the better I get at being me, the more I get to share with you guys and we all get to just expand as a community. So definitely consider that, share that with everybody. Um, also, if there's anybody that's struggling to drink less alcohol or wants to practice drinking less, hit the link in my bio. Um, hit single shot method and start practicing. Everything is absolutely free. Here's what's interesting, you guys. Everyone's like, how much is single shot method? That's free, dude. <laughs> Everyone thinks I'm trying to charge to give you free information. No, take care of yourself, get results, start feeling good, and then come invest in yourself later. It's the price of a fucking shirt. That price could be the most powerful investment you ever Invest in for the rest of your life. It could be the thing that literally transform your life. This is why it's so powerful. That's why we talk about it so much. That's why we have so many coaches and so many opportunities and continue expanding. You got to invest in this, right? Most people aren't trained or haven't practiced to invest in themselves, but that's why we have the opportunity. With that said, you guys are absolutely phenomenal. I got to shut down. I do got to get ready. You guys have been here all morning. You could have been anywhere. It's 1010 over here. <laughs> We're in alignment, baby. You could have been anywhere and you decided to invest in yourself. If you guys can invest in yourself for 30 minutes, 20 minutes and listen to me just like this, that means the success and results that you would get in the community is astronomical. And I thank you. You're, you're never gonna get this time back. And it's a fucking gift just knowing that you're willing to share it with me and that we get a chance to grow together as a community. Seriously, every day is just magical. I learn more and more about you. I learn more and more about myself. And thank you for giving me a, a place to express myself honestly and really bond with the, the amazing people I didn't even know exist, and that's you. <laughs> you're phenomenal, thank you. With that said, please take care of yourself, right? Like my mother always says, take care of you. Last thing is, if I'm smiling, you're smiling.